introduce to you a wonderful poet named Joan. Joan Doby and Carter McKenzie, and they're going to like read together and alternate for the next half hour for your enjoyment. So please welcome them to the stage. Thank you. 
and I just can't decide what I want. There's this parrot this guy has on the side of the road, and the parrot creeps into this kind of a dollhouse, pulls out a paper, and on it is written my future that really comes true in a day or two. Anyhow, I didn't even know I was in danger, except now it makes some sort of sense. And on top of all this, I've got a new friend who says kind of in wonder, look, I've got a new friend, and it's real, but it's only real here where everything is magic, even the sad things, like how lonely the dogs are, the needy street people, desperate yowling, the motherless kitten. There's this gesture they make, these women with babies, fingers not quite touching the mouth, gracefully, gracefully, feed me, I'm hungry, please feed my baby. Did I tell you the farmer who loves like a child his land, every leaf, every blade of green grass? Did I show you that vast, awesome hall that they built out of mud, baked into brick, built up into magnificent arches? The architect come for a visit, stayed for a decade. Did I tell you the tricky Norwegian, the buckets of snakes whose poison is healing, the temples once hidden down under the sea? Did I tell you the beauty of brilliant sun rising up out of the roiling deep dark? Did I tell you the huge white full moon? Did I mention that truly wise man, VJ, so humble, who welcomes us here to his city, his ashram, his home, his birthday, our singing, the magic of silence, or the lovely wise woman, Harbinder, her teaching? Did I tell you that all of the people I meet seem to know for a fact that God is creation, not the cliché, but the reality of it, simple as that, all of us God, even the dog and the beggar and the pretty black baby, her necklace of flowers, God Kali, God Lisa, God Krishna, God Hannah, God Yuki, God Anna, every single one of us God, even me, Foolish me, one tiny god person, the crocodile centipede, sweet, thoughtful Shreya in search of her roots. Did I tell you the temple guard, Paul, whose wife, whom he loves, is dying, scoops me up for a ride on his bike and we almost tip over? Did you hear about Sharana, Satya, those strong village mothers who stand up like mountains day after day for the sake of their children and us? Who are we? Well, we're the guys, Logan and Chuck and our hero, Surendra, who crafted the gift of this journey, but mostly we're girls. Okay, women. Wide-eyed American women in India, all dressed up in our long silk and saris. We're like lotuses blossoming. And the kids, all those beautiful kids at the school and the center, all the time laughing and laughing, arms and hearts open, laughing, I say, for the pure joy of laughing and loving and living with hope.
it's the idea of things surviving in, a, in unexpected forms of refuge. And I first heard about this in the context of Kathleen D. Moore, who's a philosopher at the uh, University, Oregon State University. And um, she wrote about refugia in terms of Mount St. Helens and the area that was devastated by the volcano. And scientists believed that it would take a very long time for that place to recover because they assumed that it would start from the edges and move inward slowly. But what happened is there were places within the, the blast zone that recovered. And recovery happened much more quickly. And when scientists went back to see the vitality that existed there after this devastation of the volcanic um, eruption, they were reduced to tears. And so this poem is about refugia. I believe that whenever we gather uh, in a way that's conscious and attentive to life forces, we're creating a refugia too. We don't know how it will affect the future, but, but I believe that there are seeds that are protected in that poem. And uh, in this poem, it's a response to being in a beautiful place in the coast mountains where I spent a day writing. And it had been slashed over, cut over forest land, but by the time I was able to visit it, it was full of beautiful trees. And this was due to the vision of a man who planted what he called a baby old growth forest. Thousands of trees. And all around it is, is timber land for sale or slashed over land. So you can see the before and the after. And I want to read this poem because um, in, in gratitude for the ability to recover if we take care of it. Beyond the timber sale boundary, what I was seeing, signs along Shot Pouch Creek Road leading to the gate, an unexpected link, how this land took place, forest making, origins reclaimed out of and beyond a dry slash, a release of old growth children, everything on the ground, the ground start over. Witness what makes us careful. Rough skin, roots, cedar brown, articulate toes and spine, untouchable among banks of bleeding hearts. The slow extension of a snail's path, its tentacled eyes. Catkins and lichen, trails, tufts of wisnia, malaria, tassels, big leaf maple, old green flowers. What is fallen? What is possible? 15,000 trees, dug fir, western red cedar, western hemlock, noble fir, grand fir, beautiful. An over creek brush, the green nurse log, and the blossom from its delicate stem. Call in response, the effects of winter rains, beyond the barren ridges, gathering place, making abundance. Reactor by 
this time the God lifts his hand, the fragments join in me with their own music. Gratitude to my teacher. How should I be guided by any other living being? Kingdoms of the self, a lesson in destruction, forever private, what stammered tongue tied, self against self in the party, all the fragile houses in others' names, for years, family weddings, the strangest of balls, dividing heads of the table, skinned alive, fires nearly brought to waste, extravagant, and what cracked open, the shell to what spares, teacher, when you heard the rhythms of drowning, I knew you heard the more of it, not stopping me. Hard songs finally gathered, what it took for walls to come down. Out of four, the edge of light, where I am living, a shared table sometimes possible, what I would say for you. Carter, that was awesome. Uh, Joan, do you have one you want to read? Okay, where you sign? Come on up. Everybody welcome Joan. Hi. Um, this poem, which I may remember, is called Other Woman Monologue. I'm cast to be the queen of darkness, bride of evil, the wicked other woman in the play. Not her sweet, charming beauty in the center of the story, but the other, shadow woman. The one who waits alone in her lonely, echoing house. The one he comes to now and then, in the night, in secret, whispering, it's only me, don't be afraid. And then, she mustn't know, for God's sake, please, it would destroy me. And what of hell, you say? I've been there. And it wasn't wickedness that got me in, but fear. And what a friendship between women. Isis, hear me out. I'm going blind. And what of love. I speak of hunger and of music. The song my body sings when his nipples brush my breath. His lips, his breath. The ancient warbler's holy trill. I think that I would die for this. I know that I would kill. <laughs> 